Hello and welcome to Attacking Third, the CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst for CBS Sports. On today's episode, we are thrilled to discuss an Arnold Clark Cup preview. Before we get into that, a reminder to follow us on Twitter for all breaking news at Attacking Third. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, go ahead and please give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I'm so excited to chat a little bit about this. First inaugural Arnold uh, Clark Cup. You know, it's 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 news for us on the CBS side of things as well because we're going to be uh, – host right like broadcast host of this actual tournament but uh i'm excited to to dive into all things arnold clark with you how you doing lisa me too i'm really pumped to talk about it yeah these games are all airing on cbs and you can catch all of the highlights right here on attacking third youtube page um i'm pumped about it because this is a pretty big tournament like this is huge it's, it's an inaugural year for arnold clark and they're huge names, huge nations, huge teams in this. And we don't always get these February international matches that we get to watch. We're, we're not always as spoiled. And this year we are just overly spoiled with all of the different matches that we get to have. And I am pumped to kind of dive in and talk to you about it because it is the first year of the Arnold Clark Cup. And and the first time that um, some other teams are, are taking what the U.S. has been doing with their She Believes Cup over the last few years and saying, let's bring together a, a bunch of nations in our home country and England. Great idea to do this and to start this uh, play against some international competition, especially because it's a World Cup qualifying year. It's a Euros year for the women uh, and, and for three of these four teams playing in the Arnold Clark Cup. It's it's good. It's exciting. And I am really excited to chat with you about it, Sandra. How's your day going? How are you? So far, so good. I'm hyped. It's been an active, busy week for oh, soccer yeah. in general. Soccer period has been dominating everything th this week, whether no matter what side of the ball. You watch, right? Men's, women's, what, all of it. Champions League, so right? Lots Champions of coverage. League. We got, you know, CONCACAF women's qualifiers. We've got She Believes Cup, right? There's, uh, you know, Arnold Clark that we're going to take a dive in uh, on right now. You know, there's there's another tournament that's going on with French, uh, fr French's, uh, France, excuse me, France's uh, women's national team. Yep. And they've got the Tournoi de France, and it's got, you know, other teams that are lined up, Finland, Netherlands, Brazil. So it's, like, so much happening <laughs> in this international window. It's like, excuse me for, uh, you know, stepping over my words or failing to get them out. I just, we've been doing so much, even on our side, to try to do our best oh, yeah. uh, to go ahead and, and cover these things. But let's let's Exactly. Like, in. as a fan, you're just absorbing it all and digesting all of this wonderful football across the world. And as content creators and the media of it, we are still, we're trying we're to digest, trying. absorb it all, and then also, like, regurgitate it out yeah. for our, our fans, our readers, our listeners. So uh, we're here and we're doing it and we love our jobs. We're, we're blessed, Sandra. Yes, 100%. Let's talk a little bit about... I don't want to call them copycats, but there's we're already talking about <laughs> we're already talking about how there's multiple uh, mini tournaments, right, that are taking place, kicking off this week. We previewed She Believes Cup, right, on the United States side of things. It's going to have uh, Iceland. It's going to have New Zealand. It's uh, you know going to have uh, the introduction of Czech Republic in, involved in that uh, tournament. Now we're going to look at uh, Arnold Clark, and I think what's standing out the most, right. In, in this in this tournament uh, is that it's going to be four teams who are all ranked in the top 10 of the FIFA rankings. It's a six match tournament hosted by England. You've got Germany, Spain, Canada. So we're talking number six, you know, eight, nine ranked teams in, in, in the world. Round robin style matches all across England. Matches are going to be hosted in uh, Riverside Stadium, Carroll Road. Molyneux and Wolverhampton. So lots of opportunities, right, to, to check out some different facilities. Same exact dates, right, the same window of time uh, for all these mini tournaments uh, going from February 17th all the way through to the 23rd. In terms of the fixtures that folks can keep an eye on, it's going to be England and Canada kicking things off while Germany and Spain go head-to-head -head on February 17th. So you should probably watch that today if you're listening right now. Uh, followed by England and Spain, Canada and Germany on the 20th. And then to close things out, England and Germany will go head-to-head -head while Spain and Canada do get out on February 
23rd. So in terms of these fixtures ahead of us, Lisa, are there mm-hmm. any in particular that you're like really curious to sort of circle that you really want to pay attention to? Yes. I mean, these are top teams. All four of these nations are top 10 in the FIFA rankings right now. So any single match that you throw on is going to be good competition. But for me, Canada versus Germany on February 20th, it's a middle match day. So it's uh, the middle of the three days for both of these teams. Um, Canada starts against England and Germany starts against Spain. So when they meet up on February 20th, they'll already have one game under their belt, which is, I think, really good for both sides to get competition already in before they face each other but germany is their powerhouse their number three ranked team in the world in the fifa rankings and canada is coming off of a winning the olympics they won gold in tokyo last year um they do have a good relationship against each other or rather playing with each other over the last few years um and they have played each other a lot and canada really just hasn't come out on top in a lot of those matches when you look at that. Um, So for me, this is going to be a a huge, huge match um, between Canada and and Germany. Um, The the goalkeepers for Germany are very good. Um, They've both been nominated for FIFA Pro World 11, their third rank. They've won gold in the Olympics in 2016. They're incredibly, incredibly successful and they've posed a big threat to Canada over the years. So I think this is such a test for Canada coming off of winning the Olympics in in 2020. Can they maintain, can they continue to progress their team, especially as they look ahead to CONCACAF W championship coming up this summer um, and they prepare for the world cup of 2023. This is their first big, big test leading into the world cup because every nation that wins the Olympics, what do they want to do? They want to go and try to win the World Cup just a a year or so later. So this is huge for me. Canada, Germany, February 20th. I am tuning in hands down on CBS to watch this one. But I mean, any of these matches are going to be good competition. Sandra, for you, is there one that stands out, one that you're really pumped to tune into? Yeah, I hear you on Canada versus Germany. I think that's going to really tell us some things <laughs> that we are maybe wondering about this Canada side. I'm I'm actually going to maybe take a real close look at that uh, Germany-Spain game that's going to be kicking off and just sort of see like what the, these two like European giants can kind of like bring, not just against the opposition, but like out of each other. Like Spain has you know, such a tendency to just be this like, you know, ball possessive, like orientating like type team Germany being able to sort of win the ball and sort of be able to progress and like, uh, you know, kind of break down these these lines. So I'm curious to sort of see these two kind of giants maybe go head to head or maybe see if they even cancel each other out a little bit. Like there's kind of the potential there to sort of see like, well, who actually wants to take control of the, of the game and sort of see like what happens there. So I think that could be that. I think that could be a fun one. If maybe perhaps you're a fan of, you know, the methodical type of <laughs> soccer, maybe, maybe the slow, the slow burn or the slow build, uh, so to speak. And I guess maybe I'm telling a, a little bit of myself, but in that, and that's the, the game that I'll be uh, taking a, a look at. But I mean, these are all four teams that uh, with, with three of them uh, representing Europe, right. And Canada, the lone, region in CONCACAF uh, within this Arnold Clark uh, tournament and both of all well not both but all four of these uh, national teams are all in the mix right of uh, of the hunt for a uh, World Cup mm-hmm. qualifications right those are all sort of uh, kind of going to be coming into full swing in this year with 2022 for CONCACAF just having these this preliminary stage, right. With Canada sort of waiting alongside the United States women's national team for the rest of their competitions to sort of take shape and take form. Whereas with your, you know, Europe, the uh, UEFA and the Euros have sort of been going on for a little while already where we featured some of the preliminary games on, on Paramount plus uh, as well. So I'm excited to sort of see all of these games as a whole, but there's absolutely a couple that I think uh, we have circled for, for each of us looking forward in terms of these teams as a whole. Why don't we maybe take a quick overview perhaps of yeah. each 
each national team. We have to start with the hosts, of course, in England's women's national team. Head coach Serena Wigman uh, departing, right, to, from the Netherlands, going over to England to lead the Lionesses, hopefully to, to glory. It's something that they've been chasing for a little while with this program, particularly with this kind of core of uh, players in place. Uh, but uh, there's going to be some some key players, right, uh, not able to, to participate uh, in this inaugural tournament. Yes, there, there really are. I think um... – it's good to highlight who will be there, though. Lucy Bronze, Ellie Roebuck, and Leah Williamson, they're all returning from injury. They they haven't been involved in the England national team over the last few camps that they have been brought in. But huge loss for England is Captain Steph Houghton. She suffered uh, an Achilles injury that she is still recovering from that that happened back in September um, and actually head coach Wigman said that she was really disappointed that she couldn't have Houghton in for this Arnold Clark Cup she was really disappointed that when you can't bring in your top players and the ones that you want to compete and see compete against other nations the most um, so because of that uh, it looks like that Leah Williamson will wear the captain's armband for England, which is huge. Um, and that's something she has done before and something she's trying to do more and more so. So this is her chance to kind of step up. And, and, and when you look at the overall roster that England is bringing in. I think you have to highlight some players. Of course, Fran Kirby forward. She plays for Chelsea. She's been to two World Cups. She was in the 2017 Women's Euro. She's became Chelsea's all-time leading goal scorer in, in 2020. She's definitely a player that is going to cause other teams some trouble. Someone else that I'm really interested and excited to watch is forward Lauren Hemp. She plays for Man City, um, and she is – arguably one of the best players in the women's super league this season. She's really young, just 21 years old. She plays out on the wing in the front line. She runs up players with the ball. She's got really high energy. She's quick. She can get in behind back lines. I think she will cause some trouble for opponents, but there's just a, a lot uh, at stake. I'm going to say for this England team, because since new head coach Serena has taken over, as you mentioned, formerly with the Netherlands, um, the Lionesses have been undefeated. Now they've only played six matches and they've scored 53 goals in those six matches and they've conceded zero goals. Like these stats are crazy. So I think the competition for England is maybe why they looked to host a tournament of this caliber with three other nations that are in the top 10 rankings right now in the world so they could face some good competition i mean the last match that england played was against latvia um if, if you didn't watch these highlights or see this game go back and watch it the score at the end was 20 nil to england they scored 20 goals in this match and now they they go and they entered this arnold clark and they have to face off against canada gold medal winning olympians so i think the shock factor for england is going to be there when they step on the pitch for the first time in today on, on thursday in this um inaugural cup for the arnold clark cup yeah, I'm with you. I think when you look across all the lines, there's a number of players that we're probably going to see for England take the pitch. Uh, but with you in terms of uh, the, these Manchester United players that could possibly be coming out here, or even Manchester City players, I'm, I'm going to be looking at Alicia Russo to to maybe get involved in the mix there and in terms of the attacking line. Uh, and we'd like to maybe draw some comparisons, right, for, for our American audiences to sort of lean into, right? There's Rachel Daly, who's actually listed from the Houston Dash as a defender, though she typically plays in the higher attacking role for Houston Dash. But even for somebody like Alicia Russo, who has experience, Experience at the collegiate level, right? A former Tar Heel now playing, uh, you know, overseas with Manchester United, representing England's uh, women's national team for some years now. So there's there's a lot of different connections there. But I'm going to be looking for her on the uh, the attacking side. Maybe look take a look on the defensive side of things that Millie Bright, you know, a FIFA Pro Best Eleven. There's a number of players crossing that. As the host, I think they're looking to maybe come out here and probably, you know, impress a little bit, maybe dominate. I think it's. <laughs> There might be a little element of pressure there, right? You're you're putting together this this event, and if you come up short, you know, and sometimes there's the, those negative narratives Agreed. that come around it. Agree. There has to be the pressure for England to perform and and really come home with the cup, right, and the title for this inaugural 
tournament that they're putting together because why else would they put it together if not to win and add another star to their resume? But we'll see. I think it's a really tough competition for England and it will be a huge, huge test for them. You know, uh, in terms of the, the, the remaining European squads, I'm going to jump to Spain mm -hmm. next. Okay. Uh, we've got head coach Jorge Vilda bringing in all of his, uh, all of his roster. We got a number of players that, that I'm sure folks are probably familiar with at, at least at this point, right. Watching so many of these players connected with a, a team like FC Barcelona, you're talking about 10 players across this roster for the Arnold Clark Cup. Lar largely considered the best club team in the world right now just because of their success, their constant run of success, right, that has been in play. And obviously having the best player in the world on your roster. And Alexia Futez is probably a little bit more of an X factor, right? If you're the Spanish side uh, heading into this Arnold Clark Cup. Yes, I mean, you have to take a look at that. Overall, Spain ranked number nine. So they're the, actually the lowest ranked um, of uh, of this crew uh, and these nations heading in um, out of the top 10 teams, but still ranked number nine. Incredible. And as you mentioned, Alexia Puteas, she is the best in the world right now. It, it's her elegance on the ball. She is so fun to watch. So I like that you highlighted Spain because this is a player that it's just fun to watch, right? Anytime you get to watch the best player in the world, you should turn it on and you should do that. Uh, she can score goals. She is just crucial to Barcelona and she's crucial to Spain in, in getting in behind, um, going forward. She's just really, really an important player for them. And she's the best right now. I like that you jump to Spain because they have uh, a lot of players for them that know each other because as you mentioned 10 playing on Barcelona so if they play together for club and then that translates directly to their nation play and every single player called in for the Arnold C Clark Cup plays in Spain except one there's only one player on Spain's team that does not play in Spain. That is defender Ona Batley. She plays outside of Spain for Manchester United. That's the only one. That just goes to show how competitive and intense the football is in Spain, which of course we already knew, but for those like who are who are coming to this new and fresh, um, this is this is a good squad that they have put together. Yeah, I'm really excited to again see what this what this team brings up against, you know, England, Germany, Canada. It's it's partially why I had the Germany and Spain game as one to watch for for me and in my book, I mean, having been able to watch, you know, some of these players with Barcelona live, they just sort of uh play a a, a beautiful type of soccer that you just want to see played out on the international level as well, not just with, with club side. So I'm going to be absolutely trying to keep uh, an eye on, on all of the games that they play for sure. Uh, with so many of these different players, hopefully coming in and out and being able to, to get different looks, right? Because when you're playing this sort of Brown Robin style tournament, things like, you know, minutes management and, and player rotation will obviously come into play. So I don't expect, you know, 10 players from Barcelona to be like getting all three, like full 90 minute matches. Although we'll see, I, you know, we'll, we'll see what Jorge has up his sleeve uh, for this one, but I'm absolutely thrilled to see, uh, you know, Sandra Paños in goal, hopefully in, in some of these matches, you know, strong in net, strong hands. I love to, to see her, uh, you know, blocking shots and stopping such Mappy Leon, hopefully uh, able, you know, to be fit out there and, holding things down for uh for the defensive side of things and yeah alongside Alexis Puteas in in the midfield I would love to see uh you know Claudia Pina you know come in and and, mm -hmm. and shake some things up I think she's a player that uh, is on the rise uh for sure and then of course you have the veteran and and Hermoso you know alongside uh, the, the attack there so it's going to be some some good things if, if Spain can do what they do while remembering to shoot and take uh, <laughs> take chances right and in front of goal maybe they can come out on top in this one we'll we'll, we'll see I, I gotta see him shoot though we'll see would you consider spain to be the underdogs then looking at these four nations 
You know what? No, it's hard to say. I think it's easy to maybe look at them and say they might be an underdog in this one, especially when we were looking at the rank and you're putting a number yeah. by it. But I don't know. I think uh, I think maybe I would put uh, uh, the CONCACAF uh, region in this one is considered the underdogs. And we'll get to them <laughs> quick, but we can't. Uh, we're going to round out the uh, the European side of things here by diving into Germany a little bit highest uh you know one of the highest ranked number three in the world in terms of this uh in terms of this tournament but they're coming into this inaugural cup uh as invitees uh, from england missing some some big names uh going into this tournament lisa they they are they're missing uh alex pop and byron munich sydney Loman and Leon, Jennifer Marojan, um, a lot of big, big names missing. Also for Chelsea, Melanie Luel Poltz, excuse me for that one. Um, yeah, a lot of big names. There were a lot of different roster changes for this one. When the initial rosters dropped, there was a, not, a lot of names listed that ultimately couldn't be called in. Seven players that were ultimately ruled out for various reasons, some of them COVID, some of them injuries happening. So a lot of changes going into this. It's really that next man up mentality for Germany at this point. And I think that's what makes the Germans so good and so intense is that they can have seven players that were essentially first string to be called in for this cup in this tournament not be able to compete and the next seven that are slotting in are on the same wavelength they are the same level of intensity the same level of play um, i'm really really excited to watch germany play i'm really excited to watch their goalkeepers they're two of the top goalkeepers in the world one with fc Bayern is Laura Benkarth and then Chelsea's and Katrin Berger. These two goalkeepers are phenomenal. There's only three matches to be played for Germany, and I hope we get to see a full 90 from each of them because that's what I really want to see and how they play with their national team and against international competition. That, so that's really what I'm keyed in on for Germany and what I'm going to look at. I'm with you on that. I mean, we say it all the time. We love defense here, right? And we include the goalkeepers in that. I mean, Anna Kutchenberger just has been lights out for, for Chelsea. She's had uh, a string of matches to to hang her to hang her hat on uh, on the club side of things for sure. Uh, you know, connecting with that with someone in the defensive line with somebody like a Sarah Dorson, I'm going to be looking for individual performances from her. Other individual performances I'll probably be looking at to see if they're going to have a role for this uh, German side, obviously, uh, Leah Schuller is a big name in terms of uh, in terms of the forwards. But I'm also even looking at someone like Alinda Dahlman, right, a midfielder who could possibly come off the bench, uh, you know, be a bit of a game changer, a veteran who can make you pay on set pieces, right? She's uh, she's got a mean noggin and can head him away. So you know, people, I'm sure will be on, she'll be on the scouting re reports. I'm sure for for other teams, I wouldn't be surprised that like keeping that that game between Germany and, and Spain, if maybe it came down to something like a set piece with Talman uh, on the end of it. So uh, I'm eager to see, I mean, I think the, the sort of storyline around Germany with, uh, you know, multiple players being called in and then ruled out and et cetera, you know, is, is maybe a little bit of a, a challenge or opportunity that the team is going to try to take on as they head into this, uh, this tournament, you know, how are they going to look like, how are they going to rally together with some of those changes and sort of be able to, to push through that. Now, in terms of uh, the final team, fourth and final team participating in this one, we've got uh, the CONCACAF representing with the Olympic gold medalist, Canada head coach, Bev Priestman. Like you said, Lisa, I think you set it up pretty early at the top of the episode. This is uh, another important tournament for this team to be participating in uh, to kind of kick off things in 2022. Ton of players from that gold medal winning team, 18 players total, but no uh, Kristen Sinclair available uh, due to personal reasons in this one. A ton of NWSL connections as well, Lisa, yeah. for, for Canada going into this one. Canada ranked number six in the world as they head into this tournament, and they're the only CONCACAF nation competing in this. I think that says a lot, right, about 
um, uh, what England was looking for in their competition when they they put this tournament together. But as you mentioned, NWSL players are represented so heavily throughout this Canadian roster. Devin Kerr, Aaron McLeod, Kaylin Sheridan, Alicia Chapman, Victoria Pickett, Quinn, Sophie Schmidt, Desiree Scott, Nichelle Prince, just scattered throughout from goalkeepers to forwards on this roster. So if you are an American audience, the American soccer fan, soccer, and you're looking to watch some of these and, and recognize some player, Canada, you'll, you're going to know a, a number, a number of players there. But this Canadian team, they I think they have a lot to prove heading into this. And I know I did mention it at the top of this episode, but they do coming off of an Olympic gold medal and having 18 players from that team be represented in this roster it, as a Canadian person and, and looking just at this team, I would say that they should come out on top of this tournament. However, they're competing against incredible, incredible nations. Um, it, it's just a, a lot for them. I'm really excited when I look at this roster, besides watching um, all of the players I know from covering them in the NWSL, I'm excited to watch Rose. Uh, she's a, a forward. She plays for Reading. She's young, 22 years old. Um, it, she's played so many caps with the Canadian national team before even starting her professional career with, with Reading, which I think is so impressive. And it gives her a different perspective on the game because she was competing with the senior national team before even getting to go overseas and to play um, in the Olympics. This was a player that came off the bench. And, and for those Americans that are listening to this and, and are big fans of the United States women's national team, this is the player that um, in the semifinals, when Canada beat the United States, she drew the penalty kick against United States defender Tierna Davidson in the box. It went to VAR. Ultimately, it was a penalty kick. Jesse Fleming put it away for Canada. So this is a player that is an impact player. She does. She did come off the bench. I would love to see her get a start in these Arnold Clark Cup matches because just as a young player who's now had time uh, at the professional game in, in Reading, I want to see what she can do now at, at this level and with the national team. Um, so that's who I'm really focused on for Canada. For you, CONCACAF team, Sandra, anything that you're really excited to watch or honestly see what doesn't happen or what does happen with Canada? Look, I think this tournament is made for Canada. I'm ready to see Bev Priestman take this team with so many of those Olympic gold medalists already and try to have that same mentality of belief, right? And confidence that really took them through the Olympic games in which, and the few of their games, especially within those knockout mm -hmm. round scenarios were kind of considered underdogs at one point, right? And this is a Canadian side that absolutely frustrated their opposition with patience. I mean, talk about literally killing someone with kindness. It was just stifling. Yeah. And you saw the frustration on the opposition side when they were trying to, you know, uh, you know, break through in Canada. And even we saw that with the United States and how they had the struggle there as well. Uh, but I'm, you're absolutely correct. I mean, I'm going to be keeping an eye on, on individual performances throughout uh, this tournament, especially for, for Canada. I mean, we've mentioned no Christine Sinclair. So I love that you mentioned Deanne Rose for forwards. You know, this is an, again, there, there's an opportunity there, right? You don't have your longtime captain, your face of this Canadian women's national team, uh, for, for so long. So I'm looking for team Canada to maybe get us some different looks in, in the attack. Uh, if that's something that they want to utilize this tournament for now, if they're going to try to utilize it similar to what they did in the Olympics. I'm not too sure if we're going to see some breakthrough attacking tactics. I don't know, but I still would love to maybe see some rotation among the forwards. Would love to see some combination of, of youth with uh, Jordan uh, Hoytema and then Deanne Rose, maybe alongside with, with Nichelle Prince there in the mix, but I'm absolutely keeping an eye on uh, Chelsea midfielder, Jessing Fleming. I mean, she is some, yeah, she converted that penalty kick against the United States, but she converted multiple penalty kicks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the knockout rounds of the Olympic games. I mean, you're talking about a young player being given the torch essentially to, to, you know, being passed the torch and to sort of take that kind of leadership position and take that pressure on your, on your shoulders, you know, and she's, 
doing really well for Chelsea as well. Has that to maybe navigate some injury, but you know, was name player of the month. I think towards the end of, of 2021, uh, there's been about a do- dozen matches or so, right. in in the, in the women's super league and has, uh, has some goals and has a couple assists under her belt already with the, with those games. And, I'm also going to be looking, you know, on the defensive side of things, right? We we love defense, right? And on attacking uh, third, but uh, I think looking at somebody like a, a Khadija Buchanan obviously is going to be someone who's always going to stand out. You know, she's someone who always has some some tough tackles, has some, you know, physical play in terms of being able to shut things down positionally. So that's absolutely uh, someone on the defensive side that I'm going to be uh, paying attention to. And uh, I'm going to be rooting for Canada. I would love to see them uh, frustrate some European opposition. Uh, let's go. Let's let's see. It's everyone. It's, it's going to be interesting to see a Canadian team try to tackle a tournament as maybe a, with a little bit of a target on their back, right? You yeah. know, a middle winner. So uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see for sure. Uh, excited to watch it because we can do that. Uh, stateside, you can watch all the Arnold Clark Cup matches exclusively on CBS. You can catch full games live and on demand on Paramount Plus. And again, attacking third YouTube is going to be your home for the extended game highlights in case you mm-hmm. miss any of the action beginning February 17th through the 23rd. And want to thank you all so much for listening to us and our. Arnold Clark preview. You can follow us on Twitter at attacking third for much, much more. We're on Apple podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you listen to your podcast shows, you can leave us a five-star review on Spotify. And if you have any questions for us, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple podcasts with your question and we'll answer it during our mailbag segment. We're also available as video subscribe to youtube.com slash attacking third. And we'll be back on tomorrow with more NWSL team by team previews for Sandra and Lisa Roman This was Attacking Third.